What is up YouTube, it's Kingfisher745 and welcome to my Spec Op 30 first look and overview. In this video we're going to check out everything that came with the brand new Spec Op including a look at the all new characters. First of all though, thank you to Agent Tesla for the graphic. But now, to begin our journey into the spooky Halloween Spec Op. As soon as we begin we see Hela asking her sisters, are we in agreement? Otherworld will be ours if we can carve a path from the Dark Dimension. London will be ours when we have conquered Otherworld. Then we are agreed. Dracula knows his role? He does. Let us begin. We will not meet again until it is time. Let us unleash Dracula to do his work. If he does it well, he shall have the reward he has demanded. Alright, well there is a setup and a pretty fun story so far. But now let's move on to the taskbar itself. The first thing we're going to see is the blueprint for the magic salt. And this is something different instead of balanced. It has a very high defensive bonus. So 19,403 defense. I actually could use some of these especially for my defensive team. And also it shows that they have learned from previous mistakes. Well at least in part. But now moving on to the next blueprint, this is for the Banishing Wand. It's a ranged magic attack that has Death Frost, Soul Fire, and Lesser Banish. Sacrifice 25% of Agent Health, but remove 25% of Enemy Health. However, it does reduce damage versus bosses and does not affect group bosses. So that's unfortunate, but of course it has to be that way. Even though the very first thing you think of is... This would be incredible against group bosses. Either way, we're going to find a good team against him, trust me on that. For our next blueprint, there's going to be the Binding Amulet. It's a free action, and it's going to give a self buff that says high chance to avoid next magic attack and regain health and stamina. Well, the fact that it's a free action is definitely a good thing, and it's kind of some more Enchantress hate although it does fit the theme of the spec op as well. Then our final blueprint is for the Charge of the Witches. It's part of the Witches set, piece 1 of 4, and it's also a quick action AoE buff. First it has Power of the Coven, so increases Witch set damage if other pieces of the set are equipped. Next it's going to give Breakdown to all allies, next single target attack, and also gives a magic reduction for all your allies. So not a bad quick action and a decent way to start out the set. But as far as the true reward for this spec op, it's of course going to be Spitfire. She's a scrapper and she has first, accelerated healing, gradually restores health during combat. Next she has hyperspeed, attacks cannot be interrupted, takes two actions every round, and she has an increased chance to take the first turn. But if that wasn't enough, she also has together. Chance to grant allies united, allowing allies to join in on single target attacks. Now, I hate to get overhyped for this one, but she's so incredible. I'm so hyped for this. With passives like that, there's no way she could be bad. Oh, but there's also some items to win. So first, the Wicked Broom from Mission 1, and it has Unholy. So gain Ethereal Strike, but lose 10% of current health each turn. If below 50% health, all damage is increased by 25%. If below 50% health at the beginning of a turn, receive magic reduction. Then it also causes Withered and Dark Void. And it looks like a decent amount of damage as well. In Mission 2, there is going to be an epic boss, Dormammu. And one reward they're showing is a Reflective Mirror. It's an AoE buff that gives Reflective Mirror to all allies. High chance to avoid next single target attack and return damage to attacker. Now that gadget is definitely screaming quick and powered ISO 8. Then in mission 3 the reward is going to be the cursed potion launcher. It's an AoE attack that applies Bane. So not too much going on but it does look like decent damage. Alright so there's a few of the mission weapons now let's just go ahead to the news page and we'll see what items on sale. It looks like it's going to be the craft. So which is set piece? three of four. It's going to first of all have exploit attrition, the power of the coven once again, lesser banish and bleeding, and it's going to give your agent unholy. So I don't know, first look, it does seem like it's going to do a ton of damage. 
but I'll of course work on building it and then I'll show it as soon as I possibly can. With the right debuffs and the other set pieces, I would have to guess this thing could one shot someone. That's just first impression. But you know what? Enough of these things, let's move on to the item that you probably want the most. The most incredible hyped item of all time, the pumpkin fruit pie. This game changer is going to apply distraction, exhausted, off balance, and winded. And of course I'm kidding, but it is a pretty cool thing. I see what they're trying to do. But enough of the pie, we're going to check out the brand new heroes, first starting with the new lockbox character, Baron Mordo. And apparently we need someone else training, but I don't think anyone else has XP right now. Well, I mean, not enough. But anyways, here he is, classic Baron Mordo. And he is a blaster. For his passives, he has Death Ward, so immune to fatal, near fatal, and brutal effects. Next, he has Desperate Measures. Attacks gain desperation, dealing increased damage when low on health. Also, attacks become measured, dealing increased damage when high on stamina. That's a nice little combo right there, and I'm actually liking measured. But then finally, he has Reluctant Defender. Chance to gain a shield before being attacked. And allies have a chance to gain a shield when low on health, before an attack. I'm being completely honest with you, those are very solid passives. So he's looking promising so far. Then for his level 1 he has Bolts of Balthak. A ranged magic attack that exploits attrition, exploits strain, and causes bane. You know, that's his level 1 with exploit attrition and his built in desperation plus measured attack. No wonder we need magic protection. I'm not sure how much it's going to do once he's in PvP, but I'm guessing it'll be pretty impressive. Then his level 2 is actually a multi-function, so let's go ahead back and look at the original ability. This is one we're definitely excited about, Astral Phase, and it applies Astral Form. Avoids all attacks except Magic and Psychic. The next attack deals more damage, and it's removed once you perform an attack. However, Astral Progression has Astral Aggressor. Does not remove Phase Effects. It also bypasses cage effects. So how about an invisible woman and Baron Mordo team? That actually could work out. This also has desperation and measured attack, like all his moves. It's stealthy. It's a summon attack that applies straining and most importantly despair. Removes and prevents resurrection effects while active. And it prevents most healing effects. Despair is an incredible debuff, so that's very welcome. On to his level 6, it's Sinister Summoning, another summon attack with Astral Aggressor. This one has, of course, Desperation, Measured, and it's Stealthy. Plus, just remember the cooperative A-ISO for these summon attacks. Lastly, it applies Chaos Shot and Breakdown, so there's a bunch of debuffs that will really help out his level 1. Um, flanked anyone? If his follow-up is his level 1, that's going to be amazing. Then as for his level 9, it's the Crimson Bands of Sidorak. This is basically his force cage. The enemy can only use subtle or defensive abilities unless phased. They can't protect or counter, but can only be hit by phased attackers, subtle attacks, or defensive abilities. Those astral aggressor abilities, however, will be able to hit. So yeah, he definitely seems worthy of picking up. It's all going to come down to our comic cover luck though, so I'm going to wish you luck right now. Last but not least, it's the original Spitfire. And we already saw her incredible passives. Now let's hope her abilities are good as well. We begin with Fiery Fists. An unarmed melee attack that is stealthy, has faux fire, so chance to apply disoriented. It also grants herself Fast is Furious. An increase to attack and defense that stacks 5 times. Next up for her level 2 it's Attack Run. An AoE attack that is stealthy, has faux fire, and applies tenderized and open wound. So that's a pretty awesome AoE attack. Open wound could be incredible depending on who you face. Her level 6 is Voracious Vixen. Another stealthy attack. Spoiler, all of them are stealthy. 
but this one has lifelink so restores full health and stamina when an enemy is knocked out from this attack. Plus it has fatal blow. Oh, and it will disturb your allies. Sometimes. Then for her level 9, it's the Sleeping Tiger. This attack exploits bleeds, has hemorrhaging, and consumes all stacks of Fast as Furious to deal extra damage. So yeah, this character definitely fills and seems solid. Probably one of the best spec up heroes in quite a while. And one of the best overall. She's going to be invading PvP. I have a feeling. So I'm just letting you know right now, make sure you get her. Finish those tasks. Skip the epic boss if you have to. But don't miss out on Spitfire. And as far as those tasks are concerned, don't worry. I'll have a step-by-step -step walkthrough of the entire spec op. Just make sure to subscribe, please leave a like, and comment. Then until next time, good luck, and take care.